this. One day your hearing is fine, and the next your world starts to go very quiet until you can scarcely hear a sound. That's what happened to my next guest, Ellen, when she was just in high school. But thanks to a new invisible hearing device, today, right on this stage, Ellen will hear again, just like she did in high school for the first time when she was a teenager. Take a look at her story. It was really difficult for me for a long time just to tell someone I was hearing impaired without feeling like I was gonna start tearing up. I have severe hearing loss with the high frequencies and then moderate hearing loss as you move into the lower frequencies. I first started noticing my hearing loss when I was in high school, I played softball and field hockey, and it was really hard to hear the coaches from the field. My mom, she was 28, and both my brothers have hearing loss. We don't know what it is, but it's some sort of genetic hereditary trait. There are things that I can't hear that everyone else does on a day-to-day -day basis. Growing up, I thrived on meeting new people, but got to the point where starting a new conversation was more difficult because you never knew if I was going to be able to understand the person. Do you remember the timing on all of this? Do remember what time? Do you remember the timing on all of this? My husband has to repeat himself a lot for me, so I'm sure that that can be frustrating for him, but he's very supportive and understanding. I wouldn't say that I have to compensate more with Ellen. I think the key to any marriage, especially one with someone who is slightly hearing impaired, would be patience. The year that I graduated college, I went to an audiologist, and the audiologist told me, you need hearing aids. It was really upsetting for me because there was like a stigma attached to it. I'm this young, outgoing girl in my early 20s, and I just didn't see myself as the type of person who wore hearing aids. But that was when I started really realizing that I did have a problem. When I put my hearing aids in in the morning, I can always tell everything all around me is buzzing, just general background noise. But what I don't like about these hearing aids is that they are behind the ear, so it's a little bit more conspicuous. I think having a more advanced hearing aid would make all the little insecurities I have go away because I would have a disability, but no one would know it but me. Welcome, Ellen. Thank you for having me. You know, I, I appreciate you. Thank you for sharing this story with us. I'm, I'm very interested, and I want to make it clear to everybody, the challenges that folks who don't have normal hearing have. And I would love if you just sort of take us through a typical day so we can understand that. Okay, well, I think that the most challenging thing for anyone who has hearing loss is just general conversation. People take for granted being able to have a basic conversation with someone, whether it's on the elevator at work or, you know, when I'm cooking dinner with my husband. Mm -hmm. you know, one, if I could just share this with everybody, one statistic I looked up before the show was that there are about 30 million people who have hearing problems, mm -hmm. who probably need hearing aids. And if I understand correctly, about six million actually use them, which means only one in five people who would benefit from a hearing aid use one. Mm -hmm. So there's obviously something going on there. Do you, are you ever embarrassed by it? I like to say that I'm not, but it's definitely something that, you know, I, I'm self-conscious about. There's a reason that I wear my hair down 90% of the time. Um, I actually had to get my hair cut this way because I can't tuck my hair behind my ears with my hearing aids there because I'll get feedback from the microphone. Can you show everybody your, is it okay? Do you yeah, mind? sure, sure. It's um, very She's very dainty ears, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. And it goes just behind the ear, just like this. Yeah. Would you mind if I showed everybody an animation of what's going on in your ears? Absolutely. So come on back here. So from the outside of the ear, the pinna is that outside part. If we go inside, if you run this animation, you'll see that through the ear canal, there's a membrane here, uh, the, the tympanic membrane right about there, and there are little bones above it. The fluid in here will sometimes cause pain for you if you get an infection. That vibrational effect on the membrane moves those bones. So that membrane, as it moves, if you go inside real close, moves these three bones, the smallest bones, that, that little one there is actually the smallest bone of the body, and it sends a, a cascading set of fluid sounds through the ear into the cochlea, and in the cochlea, there's little hairs. You see the hairs there? As they vibrate, as the fluid moves through them, we transmit sound to the nerves. And you see the hair shrunk? Those hairs shrunk because this ear was exposed to loud noise, perhaps occupational, perhaps from music. So your ear doesn't have the sensory component anymore. Mm -hmm. So if you're willing to, 
I'd like to ask you to sit for a second because I want to test your hearing. Okay. All right, so have a seat here. <laughs> so I'm going to sit behind you and I'm just going to say a couple numbers, Ellen, if you can just repeat them back to me. Uh, 7, uh, 66, uh, 41, zero 02. 7, 60 something and 41. Oh, yeah. good. You got about half, which is actually not bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to see if we can, uh, I'm gonna, if we can improve that a little bit, if you want to okay. give it a shot. Now, Ellen's dream has always been, I think, to be able to hear without the stigma of a hearing aid, at least a visible one. And today I think we can make that dream come true through with a new groundbreaking extended wear device uh, for the ear. So if I could, I'm going to invite uh, Dr. Shelley Borgia to come join me on stage. Uh, Shelley is an audiologist. So, Shelly, can you please explain uh, to everybody, just so we have a, a baseline number, uh, a, a little bit about uh, Ellen's hearing loss. Ellen's hearing loss. Where is it a you know zero to one hundred scale? Okay, Ellen has a mild to severe neural hearing loss, which means she misses about fifty percent of speech. All right, and can you tell me a little bit about this device that we're sure. going to be using? This is what the device looks like. It's a tiny extended wear instrument where I place it. You actually have it up in the uh -huh. middle here. I place it into Ellen's ear canal, close to the eardrum, which provides a very natural sound quality. You ready to do this? I'm ready. You excited? I am. Okay. okay. I'm, uh, yeah, we're gonna actually first, if you don't mind, yeah. we're gonna okay. look inside. And you should, everyone should be able to see exactly what Shelly sees. Okay, Ellen, and you're just going to feel the device going into your ear, but okay. you're not going to feel any pain. Slides right on up there, right into the ear canal. There you go. That's it? Let's, yeah, that's it. Let's turn it on. Oh. Hi, Ellen. Right, How so do you feel, Ellen? <laughs> Why are you covering your ears up? Well, uh, it's just happened, I guess. Now yeah, you can wear your hair up. Yeah, they have put yeah. your hair up. Exactly. Oh, that's right. I go. do have a hair rubber band on me. Right. So you put your hair back. I'm going to quiz you now. So I'm going to say a couple numbers again. Okay. Uh, six, five, six, four, one, oh, two. Six, five, six, four, one, and then I think my memory just sort of failed me. That's okay. <laughs> you know what? I can numbers. It was very good. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you for telling the story. <laughs> Shelly, thank you. And Alan, Dr. Borgia, appreciate it very much. For more information about the invisible extended wear hearing aids, go to DrOz.com, and we'll be right back.